The next one comes from Evan Hol- uh, Evan Holmes.17 on Instagram. The question is, who will be the Mariners' most valuable hitter not named Julio Rodriguez? I went with Mitch Garver for this. As everybody knows, the DH position has been a disaster since Nelson Cruz left. Like, And I, I don't think that's an unfair statement. Last year, it was a turnstile constantly. They couldn't find a solution there. Now they've got one. And not only do they have a solution at DH, but it's a solution at DH for a guy that put up a 138 WRC plus last year. I know it was in a shortened sample size, but that was higher than Julio's. That was higher than JP's. That was higher than the rest of the team. Mitch Garver is vitally important to the Mariners in 2024 and beyond. Because if you if you have a true DH you can plug in there almost every day who's providing pop, getting on base, not striking out, this lineup's going to look so much different. I will say Ty France is probably a sleeper for this, especially if he bounces back. But who's my who's my pick non-Julio-wise to be the most impactful? Garver. And I'm going to go off a similar train of thought, but at a different position. And I think Jorge Polanco. First off, because if we're thinking like literally like who is going to be the most valuable hitter besides Julio Rodriguez, well, it's probably going to be one of the guys hitting behind him. You mentioned one of the guys hitting behind him, Mitch Garver. Another guy who's going to be hitting behind him is Jorge Polanco. Jorge Polanco, based off the past production over the last four years at second base, I I mean, I would imagine if he's healthy this year, is going to be like one of the most valuable players on the roster just because of the production at that position in the past. Like, what happens if the Mariners get a 125 WRC plus at second base after years of like an 80 to 70 WRC plus at second base? I can't, like, it is unbelievable the amount of value that carries on this roster. I was thinking that if JP were to replicate or even exceed his 2023 season in 2024, that's an option. Now, uh, as of right now, I don't think that's going to happen for JP. So instead I'm going to count on more of a progress progress from Jorge Polanco playing a full healthy season with the Mariners this year instead of anticipating JP is going to set a new career high after blowing his old status quo for offense out of the water last season. So I think you and I took similar trains of thought to arrive at different answers, which I think is good and shows you the depth of this roster. Yeah. Look for how much second base and DH, the DH spots have struggled the last few years for the Mariners. Think about what happens if both Garver and Polanco hit that well. I mean, think about it. The Mariners missed the playoffs by two games last year. They won 88 games and had virtually no offensive production from second base until Josh Rojas got there. And then virtually nothing for a lot of the year at the DH spot. In spurts, you had it with Mike Ford. Imagine if you have Jorge Polanco and Mitch Garver both on the field and put up a 120 to 125 WRC+. plus. That is a team that, again, you, you, you heard me on a previous show recently talk about the Mariners can win the West. If those guys do that, and the rest of the lineup hits, like, why not? Think about how much better that makes your team. It makes it monumentally better. So, oh, and let me add this last thing, too. When when TJ talks about the fact that he doesn't know if JP's going to repeat what he did last season, I think all TJ means by that is maybe he doesn't put up a 134 WRC plus again. He could still be from 120 to 125. And th- in fact, I think that's right where he will be, which, by the way, that's a really good season. Just maybe it's not 134 again. Yeah, like just just think about it this way. In the previous career high for JP at the before last season was 103, and then you jump up to 134. That's a it's a pretty big jump, and usually that is that's about as big of a jump as you can get in offense in a season. So now, if you were to jump from 130 to 165, then you and I are going to sit here and reconsider <laughs> in season. If he does that, JP might win the MVP. Yeah, win the MVP and. Well, the question wouldn't be besides Julio, it would be besides JP. Yeah, there you go. All right, next question, another fun one. This comes from WB.Ryan36 on Instagram. He says, who is your favorite player on the Mariners that isn't actually that good? So we took the approach of this in picking an all-time Mariner that fits the mold of this question. And there are a lot of answers you can go with, but I'll flip it to you first. (laughs) Because I was trying to think of like a current version of the Mar- a current Mariner who I loved that wasn't actually that good. And then I'm like, well, all the Mariners that weren't actually that good end up being like essentially Abe Toro, who 
I don't like. So that doesn't work out. Do you remember the first two months of the Nick Franklin era in 2013? It was dreamy. Man, when he came up, I mean, I thought that dude was going to be an all-star. Like he was, he was stunned. We sat, I remember me, my brother, and my dad sat at the kitchen table that year. And we were thinking, okay, who is going to be the next Mariners all-star infielder? Is it going to be Nick Franklin, Brad Miller, or Kyle Seeger? That's the, that's the level of discussion we were having about the early stages of Nick Franklin's career with the Mariners in 2013. And he had nearly an 800 OPS as a second baseman in the first half of 2013. Uh, and then in the second half, he hit under 200 uh, and, essentially, and then eventually got left off the roster, bounced around for a few years in the big leagues before retiring. Uh, but his early stages were amazing. I thought I was like, wow, this is well, the Mariners don't get good players like this. Do you remember just the pattern that Mariners shortstop prospects had for a while? Because that happened with Nick Franklin. Then Brad Miller tore it up for half a year when he got up. And to be fair, Miller, I mean, Miller's had a 10-year big league career. And he's had some good spurts when he was with the Mariners. But then Chris Taylor came up, had half a, gr a really good season, and then didn't really do anything. And Cattell came up and had half a really good season. And obviously, they traded him away. He's been great with the Diamondbacks. But... That was a trend for a while, and it's all started with Nick Franklin, who was a huge prospect. Unfortunately, didn't do much. Shocker. Wow, I wonder how they evaluated him. Were Jaxie's uh, checkpoints, his batting average, and RBIs? and The man literally said home runs and RBIs. Uh, Nick Franklin's my answer, though. He was, that was, that was to say, special first half of 2013. Mine's a deep cut, but I've talked about him on here before briefly. Carlos Piguero loved that dude. Absolutely loved him, which didn't make much sense because he didn't have any sort of big league career. But you know what? Those Mariner teams in the early 2010s were so bad that you had to have something to hang on to that was fun and gave you energy. And you know what it was for me? Every time Carlos Piguero stepped to the plate, you knew. Once in every 20 or so at bats, he was going to absolutely pummel a baseball. And, you know, there were some spurts where he did just about that. Honestly, maybe it was less than every once every 20 at bats. But even still, you knew once in a blue moon, he was going to absolutely rocket a baseball into orbit. And he would. You would see him hit tape measure bombs every now and then. Love the guy. I mean, he was big. He was strong. Everything. So, Never did much, but I'll tell you what. What was I looking forward to in the early 2010s? It wasn't winning games. It was seeing Carlos Figueroa at bats. I, I had another idea for this question, which was Russell Brannion, but he was actually kind of good for the Mariners at points, so I don't know if he would have really qualified. No, he had one big year. I'm pre I, that was in 09, so yeah, I don't, I don't think Brannion qualifies. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a thought. He was a lot of fun to watch. Overall, as a baseball player, probably not great, but at least with the Mariners, he was, so didn't qualify. But shout out to Nick Franklin. He's on my Mount Rushmore of what could have been alongside Brad Miller, Dustin Ackley. Oh, they all played on the same team together. Funny. Funny how that works out.